Amtrak and Via Rail are the United States and Canada's national passenger rail providers, respectively. They both have distinct looks in trains. At one point, though, there was a train where you could see both Amtrak and Via Rail equipment frequently operating together. This cooperative service was known as the International. But the question is, what happened to it? On May 25, 1900, the Grand Trunk Railway introduced the premier International Limited train running 844 miles between Chicago, Illinois, Toronto, Ontario, and Montreal, Quebec, with connections elsewhere. The train would be taken to Canada, or the U.S., via the 6,025-foot-long St. Clair River Tunnel in Port Huron, Michigan, using special steam, later electric, locomotives. Starting in 1933, Canadian National and Canadian Pacific jointly operated the train east of Toronto to Montreal. It was the fastest Chicago to Montreal train. Throughout the 1960s, as rail passengers began turning to the roads, the Grand Trunk Western and parent railway, Canadian National, used inexpensive fares, free meals, and high levels of marketing to attract riders. However, GTW was still losing extensive amounts of money operating the International Limited. In June 1970, service was truncated to Port Huron, and the train made its final run from Chicago's dingy Dearborn Station train shed on April 30, 1971. The newly formed Amtrak would not continue any of the Grand Trunk Western's passenger trains. It wouldn't be until 1974 that Amtrak, with support from the state of Michigan, revived passenger service over the GTW. The Blue Water, soon renamed to the Blue Water Limited, was created to run between Chicago, Illinois and Port Huron, Michigan. The train initially used conventional equipment until October 1975 when French-built turboliner train sets were deployed. Meanwhile, in 1978 Canada, Via Rail took full control of all Canadian National and Canadian Pacific passenger trains. Amtrak saw this as an opportunity to increase Blue Water Limited profits by extending the route into Toronto. Discussions between Amtrak, Michigan, and Via Rail began, but often ended in stalemates. Michigan wanted the train to run at a later time on Sunday so that weekend travelers to Toronto could return home later in the evening, but VIA did not want this. Michigan also wanted to ensure day trips to Chicago could be maintained. The Blue Water Limited was the most used state-supported Amtrak route, having only one daily route trip. Amtrak, Michigan, and VIA Rail finally reached an agreement in 1982 and would create a new international train. The new International Limited would begin service on October 31st, 1982, but the name was shortened to just International in 1983. The train started east out of Chicago's Union Station in the morning as Amtrak number 364. It would run through Michigan to Port Huron by late afternoon, where it would clear Border Patrol and Customs after about an hour. Afterwards, it would take the St. Clair River Tunnel into Sarnia, Ontario, where it became Via Train number 88. It would then make its way to Toronto's Union Station a bit before midnight. The route was 502 miles over the course of nearly 11 hours. Going back west, the train was Via number 85, becoming Amtrak number 365 after arriving in Port Huron. On Sundays, the westbound train was numbered via 685 and Amtrak 367, leaving Toronto later in the morning. The International used an interesting mix of equipment to say the least. Amtrak and Via Rail agreed to share equipment on the train. More often than not, it was a Via Rail F40PH-2D leading Amtrak coaches. Other times it could be all Via equipment, all Amtrak, or some other unusual mix. About the only thing consistent in the train's consist was the coach and cafe car accommodations. Over the next couple of years, ridership was fairly steady. In 1984, Michigan proposed rerouting the International through Grand Rapids, but this was scrapped and the Pierre Marquette train was created instead. In January 1990, VIA moved the International to a more northerly route between London and Toronto. This allowed the city of Kitchener to be served, but added an hour to the schedule. In 1995, Amtrak was facing low funding and proposed cutting Flint, Lapeer, and Port Huron from the route and going south from Duran through Pontiac to Detroit. A Michigan State Commission voted to reduce the service to four days a week to allow the now quad-weekly Pierre Marquette train to become daily again. Both plans didn't go through. 
Also around this time, the International began using a consist of a VIA F40 and Amtrak bi-level coaches. In late 1999, the F40s would be replaced by Amtrak's P32-8 BWH locomotives. P42 DC locomotives would also see service on the train. VIA's F40s weren't compatible with the new incremental train control system that was being implemented between Kalamazoo and New Buffalo, Michigan. This system would allow for operating speeds exceeding 79 miles per hour. Regardless, the International was now on thin ice as Amtrak considered discontinuing the train in October 2000. Michigan approved $6.7 million to continue funding the train and kept it running. Ridership, though, continued falling. This was made worse by the September 11th terrorist attacks, resulting in lengthier and stricter border crossing clearance checks. At Port Huron, U.S. Customs repositioned security to the nearby Blue Water Bridge and refused to screen passengers on board the train. Amtrak then had to spend $27,000 a month busing passengers between Sarnia and Port Huron. Onboard train screenings resumed in February 2002 after complaints from Michigan, Amtrak, and Via Rail. Ridership then tumbled even more with the 2003 SARS disease outbreak in Toronto. It was with all of this that Amtrak thought of cutting the International's route in half. Amtrak would run from Chicago to Port Huron, while Via would run their own train from Sarnia to Toronto. Amtrak envisioned bringing back the more reliable schedule of the Blue Water Limited, allowing passengers to take day trips to Chicago or to connect with more trains leaving Union Station. The state of Michigan was in agreement, and the International would make its last run on April 23, 2004. A good lot of passengers were present for the unique train. An Amtrak P42 DC locomotive with superliners led the train west as one half, and the other was via LRC coaches with an F40 trailing. The train would split in Sarnia, where the Amtrak half continued to Port Huron in Chicago, and the VIA half would head back to Toronto. The International arrived back in Chicago for the last time, 46 minutes late. Amtrak's inaugural Blue Water service began April 25, 2004, and VIA Rail followed with a daily corridor service train. The Blue Water is 364 going east and 365 going west. VIA's corridor train is 84 going east and 87 going west. No connecting service between Port Huron and Sarnia was provided. Both trains saw increased ridership over time, and infrastructure improvements on Amtrak's end drastically increased speeds to upwards of 110 miles per hour by 2012. These days, Amtrak's Blue Water operates with Siemens Charger locomotives and a mix of Horizon and Amfleet coaches. Newer venture cars are set to take over though. VIA 84 and 87 operate with P42DC and F40PH-2D locomotives and LRC or BUD coaches. Amtrak and VIA Rail's International was certainly an interesting looking train. It connected one of America's largest cities and Canada's most populated city with several smaller locations in between. However, with lengthy border crossing delays post 9-11, interference from freight trains, and a somewhat awkward timetable, the train just couldn't carry on in its then current state. At least the outcome was passengers still have rail service, albeit disconnected, on either side of the border. Amtrak and Via Rail's successor trains still serve small and big cities alike. As someone who has ridden the Blue Water several, several times, I can say for certain the train has been sold out a good few times and sees a steady flow of passengers any other day. Plenty of day trippers, vacationers, college students, and working people alike use the train every day. The Blue Water also provides plenty of easy connections to other Amtrak and Metro trains leaving Chicago. The same could be said for Via's Corridor train, as it provides connections to several other services in Toronto. While the International may be gone, Amtrak's Connects Us plan includes a new International train through Michigan, albeit a different route, but could still link up with the current Wolverine services. In the end, the International Limited was one of the more fascinating looking Amtrak and Via Rail trains, and provided a unique link between two countries worth of major urban, suburban, and rural centers. <laughs>